Hi, I'm Gaia. Uh, I run a business called Gaia's Cakes and Confections. We're located in Putney. Uh, we specialise in creating bespoke wedding and celebration cakes, um, but we also run a weekend bakery slash patisserie um, where we open up from Friday to Sunday to the public, uh, selling a range of pastries, um, like croissants, pan au chocolat, um, and also a, a selection of our cupcakes and layer cakes. It's a very long story. It started about 10 years ago, I would say. Very much a hobby business, a hobby to start off with before it became a business, a side business, and then a full-time business. And we've been open in Putney since April 2021. My journey into the world of baking began at a very young age. I grew up in a British Sri Lankan household um, where cake is, is a very important part of any celebration. I grew up with my mum making cakes for friends and family, so my sister and I were really lucky to receive one of her handcrafted creations for our birthdays, for our childhood birthdays. I say childhood, but still to this day sometimes. I have really fond memories of watching my mum creating these cakes for friends and families and my sister and I would stand around the counter and we'd watch her and then wait until she's finished so we'd bite over the, the, the bowl of leftover buttercream. Um, so it was just really happy memories. Fifteen years ago um, I remember walking into this uh, tiny little sugar craft baking supplies store in the village where my parents lived and I just remember being completely fascinated by everything in there. So baking now, of course, is this hugely popular industry uh, with new trends starting every day thanks to Bake Off and social media. But this was well before those days um, and it was just this really magical place, uh, a complete treasure trove of baking paraphernalia and I remember walking in just wanting everything in there. They had like all kinds of tins and um, uh, food colours and glitter and edible glitter and just it was just fascinating. As a child I'd always loved art and design at school. Um, I spent a lot of my spare time doing things like calligraphy and drawing um, but I also really loved food and desserts in particular so um, I, kept a, I kept a journal um, as, a, as a child and it's really funny, looking back over it as an adult, you see that there are a disproportionate number of entries in there dedicated to descriptions of, of whatever cake or dessert I'd had that day. However, as with many of my peers of, of the second generation, and despite my parents being incredibly supportive, um, there was a sense of obligation to choose the slightly more serious, the slightly more safe and secure career path. So I actually studied maths at Imperial College um, and then I went on to work in finance in the city and where I, that's where I qualified to, to become an actuary. And it was actually studying, it was while studying for those actuarial exams, that's really when baking took a hold of me. So to become an actuary, there's, uh, it involves a long and grueling set of um, exams. So it takes up a pretty um, pretty significant chunk of your of your kind of 20s I guess and whilst you're supposed to be studying for actuarial exams um, and revising and studying you find yourself naturally drawn to it especially because it was kind of the early days of internet blogging um, and there was this massive boom of food blogs um, and you find yourself reading up on food stories recipes you know all about baking um, and you just become quite obsessed. In order to qualify as an actuary you have to take a, a set of um, a, a series of long exams um, which takes a number of years and it was kind of studying for those exams which can be quite sort of mundane um, you find yourself very easily distracted and baking was my distraction during that time. It was reading about recipes, um, food blogs, just educating yourself, practicing different techniques. Um, it became a bit of a, um, yeah, much to the detriment of my studying, it, it was definitely um, my creative outlet. I'd find myself um, thinking, oh, I really want to try out this recipe or try out this flavor combination. So you'd run to the shops and buy the ingredients for that or 
you'd start analysing recipes or making your own little, um, have a little notebook of little ideas and flavour combinations and things like that. So you know, I'd never had any sort of formal training in baking. My only way to educate myself about this topic was to just read as much as I could, really. And it was sort of the start of the food blog era, so I was reading about other people's um, experiences of different flavour combinations, um, really cool new flavour com combinations that come from abroad, or um, analysing recipes in quite a technical way. So. Um, I'd break it down by the percentage of liquid or the percentage of eggs in a recipe to, to work out how we can improve it. So it was becoming quite obsessive with the detail. Having baking as a hobby can be quite dangerous. You end up with a lot of baked goods. So I remember um, there was at one point I became really quite obsessed with making macarons. And so I was making tons and tons of macarons and I used to take boxes of it to the guys at work who loved them. So. That was my way of, of practicing and improving and getting lots of feedback. I loved a challenge uh, when it comes to baking and the more challenging it is, the more hooked I was and it just becomes a little bit of a, an obsession and you just, you just get, you get into it. And that's how I got into wedding cakes. Wedding cakes can be an amazing architectural feat because some of the, not only do they have to taste amazing, but they have to look the part and look quite spectacular. So um, it was the process of creating something that looked so challenging. That's what drew me to wedding cakes initially. With wedding and celebration cakes, um, it took me a few years to find my style because when I first started out, it was very much um, an industry dominated by royal icing and fondant uh, covered cakes, which was good, but it wasn't really until I started working with buttercream, that's when I found my stride. I love working with buttercream because I think it's such a versatile ingredient, um, uh, such a versatile medium. You can paint with it in, you know, very similar to how you use oil paints. Um, you can use many of the piping techniques that you do with royal icing. To me, baking was this creative outlet because I saw it as a, as a beautiful form of alchemy. And you take some pretty ordinary looking ingredients, um, put them together, apply the perfect processes and techniques, and then you end up with something that's so beautiful um, in a pretty multi-sensorial way. It's not only producing something that tastes amazing, but also you know, the smells coming out of the oven while it's baking is incredible. So that for me is, is why I love it. Baking will always hold this sense of, there's always gonna be this sense of nostalgia with it. Um, people will always reminisce about their childhood eating amazing sweet things like cookies and stuff. So people love it and it's, you know, their faces light up when you bring in a, a box of baked goods. So baking started off as very much start off as a hobby um, and then once I'd become a little bit more comfortable with wedding cakes um, I started to take on a couple of wedding cakes here and there when work permitted. So making it in, 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 my, in my spare time, in the evenings, at weekends and then sort of word of mouth got out and people started asking me more and more to do wedding cakes. It got to a point where it was a struggle doing actuarial exams, working and doing wedding cakes. So once I completed my um, studies I took some time out for, from work to take a six month sabbatical to see if I could make this work as a full time business and it did work. I was operating from home for a while and it just got out of hand because there was just cake absolutely everywhere. Um, so very quickly I realised I needed to move into, um, into some space um, and I found this uh, commercial unit in, in Putney. I wasn't actually going to open it as a weekend bakery to start off with, it was just a kitchen to produce uh, wedding cakes and bespoke cakes. And it was just people kept asking me, you know, why don't you open as a, as a weekend bakery here and there? And that's what made me, um, that's what made me take the leap. My mum has often many times helped in the kitchen. Um, she did a lot of the, the legwork with me at the beginning. My dad 
is sometimes an incredible, uh, d well, he is an incredible delivery driver. He helps with wedding cake deliveries a lot. Um, I would not be able to have started this business without him. So it, it, yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> So when I set out to go full time with the business, I really wanted to come up with a, a mantra or a, type of, a kind of philosophy. So I came up with this, the, the three F's, which is flavor, form, flair. And it's really just a way to encapsulate what I'm trying to do with my baking. So we have flavor. Flavor really is king. Um, by its very nature, any item of food, it needs to first and foremost deliver on flavour. If it doesn't pass this test, we really can't move on to the other aspects. Our primary mission is to create baked goods that taste outstanding. We achieve this by always using the best quality ingredients that we can get our hands on um, and we apply our well-honed techniques and execute the recipes that I've created over the, the course of the last 10 years or so. I'm very particular about the, which ingredient brands I like to use. Um, it also helps to, to bake in small batches because it helps to maintain our quality. Um, in the shop, we always try to rotate the menu so as to showcase seasonal ingredients where possible so that we get to really celebrate the flavor of them in their prime. This also, of course, helps to keep things interesting for us so that we're constantly creating new flavors and not just producing at all range. The second most important thing, in my opinion, is form. So what do I mean by this? Once you've created each of the flavours and components of a patisserie item, how do you put it together in the perfect way to create the desired form? Whether it's a wedding cake where we need to carefully construct multiple tiers, or a cupcake where you want to achieve the perfect ratio of buttercream to cake, or just the humble pastry which needs to be precisely laminated. We're always striving for perfection in form. It's all about precision here. And finally, flair. This is the really fun part. It's where we can marry pastry with art and truly bring out our originality and add our own visual signature. My favourite way of decorating a cake is using palette knives as it's so similar to painting with oils. Only this time, the cake is your canvas. I would say our signature style of bespoke wedding and celebration cakes is very feminine, very floral and quite romantic. Um, I adore flowers, so a lot of design and colour inspiration comes from flowers which are used to adorn so many of our cakes. So whether it's the final flourish on one of our cupcakes or adding a beautiful collection of flowers on a cake, Flair is so important as it, it's what creates the initial perception of the products. We eat with our eyes first, right? So we're constantly thinking about how we can do things differently and, and change things up to create that wow factor.